Hello, I'm Elizabeth Neal, and I play Shane on LARPs the series, and you are listening to the LARP Book Podcast. So let's do this thing. Okay, and welcome to the LARP Book Podcast. This is episode 49 for the 17th of January, 2017. This is our first show back, everybody. So, yay! In proper Muppet style. Uh, My name is Stuart Edwards, and of course, with me as always is Robert Davis, Thomas Busby, and tonight's special guest is Matthew Webb from Incognita Limited. How you doing, Matthew? Very good. Glad to be on here. Excellent. Do you know what? We are delighted to have you on as well because uh, we've got a lot of great stuff to talk about tonight. So basically, in tonight's show, uh, ah, no, not pirates, augmented reality. Now then, we're going to be... De- <laughs> it's the only, it was the only funny thing I could think of at the time. All right. So... <laughs> Just let, let me off on that one. The um, castle, ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the castle, ah. All right. And, and to, to be honest with you, and I said to Robert earlier as well, uh, when I read out Incognita Limited, my Monty Python funny bone uh, kicked in, and all I could think about was, of course, was Incontinentia buttocks. But that's, <laughs> that's, that's just me, you know. <laughs> Far too early to get derailed. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Have you never watched the show? Good God. We start off this way and it gets worse from that point forwards. But let's actually get into a few things here. So let's just get rid of that music for a second. Why music? There we go. Oh, okay. Uh, right then. So um, you are from Incognita Limited. Now yep. then, what do Incognita Limited do? And it's uh, we're a, a so- you do. software and uh, game design company that works on either developing or supporting live action games or augmented reality experiences using both online and mobile software, as well as we're also branching out into media streaming and virtual and augmented reality. Okay, right. Mm-hmm. So um, I know I know that uh, you did a lot for the. Well, I think you pretty much did everything actually for the uh, the the Planetfall game, uh, which is an augmented reality game. So just tell that me is little, our in-house game. That's your, oh, mm-hmm. that's your, that's your in-house yep. game, right? Okay. So yeah. tell me tell me a little bit. You know, kind of what 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 gave you the passion and the drive, and you know how it all started and and all the rest of it that goes with that. How does that all work? <laughs> <laughs> well, it started when I was a young man. Um, yeah. well, I've been LARPing since I was 17 years old, and uh, I got into software development professionally and began working as uh, a programmer in training and online software for uh, government projects, defense projects, that sort of thing. Okay. But I've been a LARPer most of my life, and I had looked at the potential of where mobile technology and augmented reality technology was going. And I said, we need to explore this. We need to start looking at the potential of the technology. I've always been a tinkerer and innovator and someone who is a complete neophile. So we started up Incognito Limited in August, 2014. And we spent about a year developing the initial version and the ideas surrounding the, uh, Planetfall app, which was the first, as far as we can tell, we are the first documented LARP to use 90% of our mechanics are completely driven by a mobile app. It oh, is right. okay. streaming light mechanics. Yeah. And it was designed, the game was designed as a test bed for those ideas and those technologies so mm-hmm. that we could try things out, fail at them, try new things yeah, in okay. which we literally just we literally conceive of the entire thing as just how how can we drive a larp using solely mobile phones and okay. online and like build it from the ground up to be technology based right and it's been a it's been a success um as an experiment and we have roughly 40 to 50 players uh, at our bi-monthly game it is a fairly popular larp for the texas area yeah. Yeah, especially considering how unusual it is. Okay. So, yeah. 
And the uh, game itself is focused on the colonization of an alien planet by a group of ragtag survivors. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, the initial plot was inspired by, it's not a copy of, but it was inspired by the BBC series Outcasts. Actually. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Love yeah, that yeah, series. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we don't have their production values, but <laughs> the entire idea of how do you survive in this place alone. Yeah. yeah. And our, our spirituals like our, our spiritual father is the Martian. We love that movie. So yeah. we really yeah. focus on because we can offload so much onto the app and you can scan things and get information and so forth. We focus a lot on science and technology and interesting problems. So it plays very differently than your uh, average boffer or, or uh, parlor game. Mm. So, so you are you are uh, ideally suited then out in Texas for uh, pretending to be on another planet. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, uh, you can you can go out into Texas and for miles and miles and see nothing but miles and miles. Yeah, you, you see, you see, in 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 Wales, we we fall under the uh, the the Stargate principle, where whatever planet they went to, there was trees um, everywhere, uh, <laughs> and, and sheep, and sheep. Yeah, it's strange that on every planet there's sheep. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. Sheep corners the galaxy. Everyone knows that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so when you when you came up with this this idea, then. Um, would did you pitch it to an already existing group or was it you know you said hey look what we can do do you fancy playing a game <laughs> we uh we started out on our own i want to say that we started out completely out of whole cloth my partners heading into that were two local game runners and uh very talented designers named uh, Riley Seaman and Steve Metz. Steve Metz okay. has his own company, Uber Games, and Riley had long been a GM for Heroic, which is a mm -hmm. uh, local and national uh, LARP organization here in the United States. Yeah, we know it. And he he uh, he worked. He's been working as a software developer as well. So we went to we out and said, you know, we hung out our shingle and said, hey, we're trying out this new game. It's got, you know, we're we're we pitched it as an experiment. We yeah. said, we said to the players, Hey, this is something weird. This is going to be new. We're going to fail more than we succeed, okay. but we're going to fail doing something interesting. And I have to say that it was a pretty good success. People were very understanding. They were excited about the fact that we were, we said, load this onto your phone yeah. and you can interact with the environment with it. And your character sheet is on it. You, all your abilities are automatically taken care of. And it's this very low entry game that you don't really have to re understand the rules in order to play effectively. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. That great reaction. Yeah. And we've we had out of the gate probably three dozen players, and we've only grown since then. And for it's not it's not a traditional combat based game. It's very light on combat. It's very okay. light on traditional mods. It's mainly a Hey, let's use science and engineering and, uh, you know, to create this immersive experience and to, like, solve interesting problems rather than go out and fight the bad orc captain of the week. And yeah. that's, that's, that's very different from many LARPers. That's, it plays more like a parlor game in the countryside. Okay, and yeah. it has a large focus on role playing because the mechanics kind of get out of the way thanks to the the app. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's 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 fair enough. I mean, yeah, it's there's always a little bit of the the suspension, isn't it, of disbelief uh, when you are pretending. I know. I know. I mean. Rob and I sort of uh, way back in the day did some um, uh, Star Trek away team um, uh, games, didn't we, Rob? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Ran a few of them, and of course. Very popular amongst some Star Trek fans. Yeah, <laughs> oddly, <laughs> oddly enough. Um, yeah, and uh, that's one of, the, one of the issues we constantly felt, we, we constantly had as vests was, uh, okay, so they, they're scanning for stuff on the planet <laughs> again. Yeah. Okay, and, that's okay. We, if somebody get a vest to them. <laughs> yeah, somebody get a vest to them. We had to have a whole dialogue between player and vest and decided to interacting with technology. 
So, so this we got rid of that. Yeah, I mean, it's great. We so that, really, that, that, yeah. So you basically, if they are interacting with technology and doing something, the app now takes over. Yeah, uh, what we have around the game side is we have the, the conceit is there's something called the uh, standard columnist device, which is effectively the tricorder. Yeah. yeah. And it keeps track of your, I'm actually going to pull it up here real quick. The, oh, cool. The entire idea is that. Ooh. Uh, right there. Okay. And it shows your character, it shows your stats, it gives yeah. you a variety of options. It actually prints out, it will show your character's history <laughs> and yeah. it will keep track of your skill list. Oh, that's okay. nice, actually. Yeah. And you can go into your inventory and you can look at options and perform actions on things. This is a fairly simple one. This is just an ammo box to un you mm -hmm. unpack it mm -hmm. and you get a bunch mm -hmm. of bullets. Um, and similarly, when you have resources, it keeps track of all of them. You can shoot off the rounds. Yeah. And when you shoot off the rounds, it actually keeps track of how many you are. <laughs> you can actually give them to different people and they scan a QR code. <laughs> <laughs> and in the uh, in the game world, we have QR codes spread around, and right. this device is synced with our server. So we can write not only a description of the item they scanned. Yeah. You can see how it's, it shows you your camera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you can set different descriptions based on the skills of the character that's scanning it. So if I'm scanning some flower and I don't know anything about biology, I can't do any biology. Right. right. I, so I don't know much about it. So the but QR I have so the QR code the that, that that they yeah. scan will also be tied to the knowledge of your character. So if you know Jack absolutely nothing about plants, it'll just say that's a really nice pretty flower. It looks like a daffodil. <laughs> <laughs> we we I won't say that we haven't taken the advantage of the opportunity to be snarky. <laughs> 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 Right, more and more. <laughs> and if you, so yeah, I mean, you scan it and it tells you it's this. And if you have biology one, it tells you more. If you have botany, it tells you even more. Yeah. And then there's actually actions you can compose on the QR code. For instance, let's say you found out this flower has medicinal properties. Mm -hmm. okay. Then the medicinal properties allows you to, someone can gather it. And what, there's gathering skills where... <laughs> I, I perform an action. It takes a certain amount of time. There's a counter countdown for how much time I'm supposed to be role playing. Yeah. And then the results of that, both the time you spend and the results of the resource gathering can be adjusted based on how skilled you are. So Ooh. Okay. unlike most LARPs where it's usually on off for good mechanical purposes, it's very hard to do incremental changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can do more like computer games where, or a lot of tabletop games where you get incremental advantages from being better and better and better at something. Yeah, okay. and that's, quite to, that's actually quite hard to do live. Yeah, yeah, very much so. And we can just do it normally and it comes out right. We can just, the thing about technology and LARPing in general is that computers are very good at executing a large number of instructions based on a large number of rules yeah. very quickly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. They're really bad at making choices. So <laughs> yeah. our general strategy is show people the results of their choices, let them make a choice, and the computer calculates everything very, very quickly. And we can yeah. make it so, like, it's very newbie-friendly for that reason because we don't have to block off things to noobs. Yeah. yeah. We just have to make them not as good as, a, as an expert player. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. I get okay. you. I get you. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds great, actually. So that, you see that a new player with, say, lower skills might we take a look at, say, let's take a look at, let's take a look at our, our, our pretty flower. And go, it's a flower. That looks kind of interesting. I've got a feeling that I, I'm missing something here. I talk to a, a more knowledgeable player and, and who, who, who then get a, the unveil of, yes, I, mean, I can do this with this. And I never have to step in as an ST the entire time. Wow. That's pretty okay. good. That's good. That's, but that's one of the hard parts is when you're doing things manually, shall I say, is that it, that eats up ref. I do quite a lot of effing. It eats up ref resources when you're giving different 
yeah. expedition to play is, it's, uh, and that sort of takes them a little bit out of the game. Yeah. It sort of yeah. breaks their mission while they're getting an expedition. Then they've got to go back in and relay it and handle it. But this is all in character. Mm. Right. Yeah, and nice. I kind of cheat because science fiction has kind of prepped us for the last 40, 50 years <laughs> to expect uh, people to walk down, walk around with little glowing rectangles. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> glowing rectangles. I've done a great job at that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Right. And so, I mean, the tricorders, like you talked about. And yeah. so people are already prepped to expect like the handheld scanner. Yeah, yeah. So the you get to introduce all these very complex rules, but it becomes very immersive. Hmm. Yeah, because trying to put a complex rule against a bunch of players doesn't always work out so well. It's so, so, we'll so, so it. neutral. I mean, you can never accuse the computer of not liking oh. you. No, so <laughs> yeah, it's right. You know, so 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 literally within your game, this is incredibly apt. Then you shall have no treaty, no vaccine, and no lieutenant yard. <laughs> Had to get that one in. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> every every, every <laughs> it's, it's 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 amazing how I can just find ways of getting that in. I don't know how. Um, the, <laughs> every single episode, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. The right, I I what okay. Really? Now I am I am now I'm intrigued with this I must be honest mm. because to me to me right now there is nothing technically stopping you either a franchising this out or making this a worldwide game There are some technical issues mm -hmm. with okay. making it so that multiple people can manage multiple games Yeah, yeah. we are currently be. addressing those yeah. Right. And we are currently looking at establishing a broader player base. Oh, the difficulty in. with Planetfall in particular is that it was designed yeah. as an experimental test bed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which it's very it's very focused. Yeah. Which means we have a very strong appeal to uh, the traditional science fiction fan base, mm -hmm. kind yeah. of people who like Star Trek and Doctor Who and things like that. But we don't have a broader appeal to what would be the traditional LARP player base yes. yeah. okay yeah. where we're very minimal combat we um are very immersive which and we we just have a very a, a it's a very exciting intense feel but it's more about surviving than than fighting mm -hmm. because one of the things the app takes take keeps track of is things like your hydration and your morale and things like that and yeah yeah, well, uh, yeah. One thing I didn't mention is allow, because of all these stats and things you can keep track of, it makes certain type of support characters much more viable. Mm. Where, Well, what we have is that the average of your stats affects the amount of time you have to do things, yeah. how uh, dangerous getting hurt is. Mm -hmm. So people are compelled to spend time keeping their stats up, which means they eat. They, they can rest. There's rest areas. Like, the nicer they are that they've built, the yeah. better they are at recovering morale and fatigue. Mm -hmm. But you also have things like focus, which if you have a leader character who has leadership, what they can do as an action, actually, is spend some of their stats, give basically five minutes talking to you about what you're doing. And at the end of it, you scan it and you gain back focus. I get you. I get you. Similar <laughs> with counselors, psychologists, yeah, that yeah, sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, they spend time talking to you, regain morale. Yeah, so you and, spend some time role playing the conversation, and then you do a quick, quick exchange on the, on the uh, devices, and just start to be balanced. Right, right. Where you yeah. you boost back up, and that means that these characters, which are often kind of ancillary or purely role play, actually have this very powerful. Um, mechanical purpose yeah hmm. which still doesn't get in the way of the role play but you have people that are very mechanical thinkers suddenly saying i have to go talk about my feelings or i have to get motivated yeah. and the leader who sits there and has a meeting and gives a rousing speech actually ha has done something tangibly useful in, on the mechanical side and this yeah. creates this interconnection yeah. One of the things we loved about, we kept, of all the games we kept referencing, it was the design philosophy around Team Fortress 2, where they designed that game interdependence, mm -hmm. where one type of character interacts with another type of character in an interlocking way that makes teamwork extremely beneficial.
they're very hard to be a lone wolf in Planet Fall. Okay. And as we move on to, as we broaden it, that's something we're going to definitely take into account. Hmm. And we're even going, to, we're, we're experimenting right now with things like traditional sort of, uh, like bra- things breaking down, thing yeah. losing, like, not the traditional expiration date, but durability and things of that nature, because okay. we can keep track of that much more easily. Yeah, yeah. And, that means I have to, I, I can't be the katana wielding black trench goat guy that never no. has holding anybody because I need other people to be what I am. Okay, right. Yeah. No, That's right. good. I understand that. The, do all this, this, this whole thing sounds really, really intriguing, uh, to be honest with you. And I would, I would love to, you know, uh, actually sort of try this out myself uh, at some point to kind of kind of see how this this all works um if nothing else the tech head science fiction nerd in me uh, is is screaming for me to do that um as you can as you can probably imagine i think somewhere back yeah. by back by here somewhere i've got a tricorder and a phaser anyway i'm ready to go you know <laughs> um we have a series of YouTube videos online that are connected yeah. to our uh, website, which is preparedforplanetfall.com. Okay. Uh, oh, right. excellent. We shall make and sure we'll, we'll be we, able we, to find our YouTube channel. And yeah. that will have our dev logs and various other things. And All we're right. definitely looking at expanding and uh, adopting, even if Planetfall, as it's written, does not continue in its current form, Yeah, it will, uh, when we... Or that's not where we're going to franchise. We're looking at taking that the lessons learned mm-hmm. and making into something uh, that is franchisable. Yeah. And yeah. In a very and the great thing if we franchise it is that it's going to be a very low effort game to run mm-hmm. because all the character creation is online and it's automated. Right. And it's not like you have to confirm someone's character sheet yeah. because it's, yeah, they're it, in the system. It's, it's, it's legal. There, yeah. That, yeah, that's what yeah. I was going to ask, because mm-hmm. there are possibly hundreds of futuristic games out there that would yeah. scream for something like this. Absolutely scream for it. So, so mm-hmm. I'm, are you, I mean, for the, obviously in a future build, as you said, once you were, hopefully you get a franchise out of it for a more customizable and more kind of like broad thing so that different games can take it, customize the way they want it to be shown and what to do so that they can use it in their own lab. We're definitely looking at that. I mean, the focus of Incognito Limited is to Planetfall is our learning game. It is where we've proven the concepts. Yeah. It was a little bit of advertising for us, but ultimately it was like, can we do this? We we said to ourselves, we were geeks and we love LARPing. How do we shove these things together and do something new? And it worked. And yeah. it even worked when it failed because we always learned something. Yeah, we yeah. had never found a situation where the mobile, the mobile and online aspects hurt us. Mm-hmm. Just the how exactly we did it. Yeah. And we took that. And even if we're not specifically offloading the Planetfall app as it is, we can say, listen, we have a we have a huge amount of code that handles all this stuff that you're going to need to do. And if you want this, we can we can make it for you, which is how we actually got in with mm. the uh, World of Darkness Berlin yeah, yeah. Uh, Enlightenment and Blood, because yeah. even though that's a very different kind of game, they saw what we did and we said, well, can you do this? And it's like you're talking about problems we have already solved. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. at the fundamental level, they're very similar problems. Yeah. And let me just, just back, backtrack a, a second there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the one thing as well, Tom, if you think about it, yeah, let's say you didn't want to or have the inclination to write or design a game. Well, mm. I'm I'm sure the nice people at Incognito Limited will have yeah. a package. You know, <laughs> we've 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 got Money these game. games. Yeah, you can just load <laughs> another thing. Click. That's the game I want to play. Set it up. Here's the instructions. Rock and roll. Here's your game. So you know, yeah. if you, th- if you think, think about it that way as well, yeah, that if you just wanted to run a one day or a weekend event, when you go like, right, okay, I haven't got the time to freaking write up a LARP. Uh, however, I can do this. This is already pre-done. It's like buying a box set for D&D. Yeah, mm. there's your story, there's your characters, there's everything else you need, you know, rock and roll. 
And I love the skills I, love I want. Mm, this yeah. is what I want to happen when you scan things. Yeah, I and love for, like parlor style games that will handle ninety percent of like your uh, what I've heard called secrets and power style games. Okay, mm. that will handle ninety percent. Of them. I love it. That's very impressive, actually. I love it, and I thank yep. you for it. Um, right. So <laughs> yes, you you did touch on then uh, the, the the world of darkness uh, in Berlin. Mm, yeah. Um, yes. So tell us, uh, uh, you know, they they obviously approached you for this uh, type of thing and and what they want to do. What did they want you to do? Well, I met with uh, Bjarke Peterson and I'm going to pronounce her names wrong, Johanna <laughs> and Johanna um, at Living Game Conference last year here in Austin, Texas. And they saw the talks I gave on incorporating technology into LARP and its pitfalls. Right. And we started a conversation about the implementation of this kind of technology and the growing number of Nordic style Vampire the Masquerade games. As mm -hmm. as you guys are probably aware, Vampire the Masquerade and the World of Darkness properties were purchased by CCP uh, yeah. recently. Yeah. Um, in the last few years. And they have decided to revive White Wolf Publishing. Uh, yeah. They're making a huge new push into the LARP scene. And one of the big things they're doing is they're taking the immersive, low mechanics style of LARPing that we see in uh, the Nordic countries. Yeah. And they are, push they are pushing for an alternative, an alternative to the, the traditional rock, paper, scissors games. Yeah. Where it's, it's these intense one-off experiences using more of the Nordic style play. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the first one is End of the Line, if you have heard, heard of that one, which has was mm -hmm. incredibly successful. And that was the work of a, they were called Odyssey at the time, but they're now called Participation Design Agency. And they were working with White Wolf with their IP. Okay. And End of the Line was very successful. They ran it for the first time in the United States at the Grand Masquerade in New Orleans, which I went to. And we finalized talking about it in New Orleans, and they said, look, we want to have a system where we can give people more control over what characters are going to play right. while still giving us the traditional control that LARP writers in the Nordic tradition have of being able to customize and encourage certain type of content. Because very different from the American-style games and the British-style games, hmm. which are very similar to each other, the Nordic games tend to be centrally written, yeah. assigned characters or very, very controlled, limited characters with very few mechanics. Yeah. But yeah. that loses a lot of will and, and self-selection and customization. And they said to us, look, maybe we can come up with this cool system wherein you can complete a questionnaire, you can select what kind of character you want to play, and we can then automatically or randomly assign loyalties and powers and all these other sorts of things based on that to have more of a Nordic sort of experience, but with so much time being saved yeah. by slapping a computer program on top of it. Yeah, yeah. And this is supposed to be a 500 person game right. okay. that operates in the streets of Berlin mm -hmm. with various locations set aside that are specific game spaces, but yeah. it's supposed to be played throughout the city, like in the streets yeah, okay. and in these locations, you know, hundreds of people, yeah. impossible to do a traditional, not impossible, mm. very, very difficult. Very hard, yes. very hard. Very labor intensive, um, yeah. As the Japanese <laughs> would say, that would be very difficult. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, they they said okay what can we use to what kind of technology we can leverage so we had some design sessions with them we talked over what they wanted and we said well we can do this 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 and the other thing and they said that sounds perfect yeah okay and we are now their official software partner uh going in and we're designing software that will probably be used in a lot of future games and way we started talking about it very quickly is that this is to, to steal a concept from the military, a force multiplier yeah. where you're making every hour a writer spends that much more potent to serve that many more people. Yeah. And they're like, this seems different than planet fall. I said, yeah, on, 
On a lot of levels, it is. But on a lot of levels, you're talking about creating player accounts, having them create characters, keeping track of their character sheets, assigning them unique traits <laughs> and sets of traits. <laughs> and from us. Same mechanics. Right. And I know, uh, I think I saw that one of you is a software engineer or a, a programmer. Yeah. And you, <laughs> hello. Yeah. All of you. Yeah. yeah. No, no, uh, no, no. I think you're trying to point at me, but I was yeah, that right yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> So if you say For that me, to a he's computer that programmer, they say, oh, 90% of the work has already been done. Yep. And because this fundamental under like underpinning is already handled. Yeah. And it's one of those things where a computer program understands how much work that is. And yeah. a non proof programmer thinks that's the trivial part. When a look, non programmer thinks the difficult parts are actually trivial. Look, all, all I needed that's to do is add, is, is add a button. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I need to. I mean, the other aspect of this is that they can, at a glance, see everything about it. I mean, yeah. one of the big, biggest advantages of Planetfall is hmm. that my economy, like, there's a lot of big games that have problems with their economy and inflation, and they don't know what's going on. And there's all these index cards that are wandering around from five years ago. Yeah. yeah. And they don't know how much is in the system, and they can never really take it away. And they can't have like a lot of drains or disasters or whatever yeah, that doesn't yeah, yeah. feel very ham handed. Yeah. But since all these inventories and all this trading is occurring on the app, guess where all that information gets sent? Mm. Yeah. Onto a computer that mm. logs it, which makes it really easy to see who's doing what, who has what, how much of A is in the system. And I mean, with the World of Darkness Berlin, the Enlightenment and the Blood games, it's like, well, mm. can you tell us this? It's like, if you need me to count numbers of things, that is the easiest thing in the world for me yeah, to say. Would you, yeah. What kind of nice little chart would you like those plugged into? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the easy part. That It looks real flashy and it looks real impressive, but it allows people to have control of their game at a glance. Yeah, and yeah. Know I know mean, what's going on. I mean, I know how difficult it is. There's, there's, there's six of us that, that, that play D&D every, every fortnight. And it's, it's bad enough for, for us, to, us to know who's got what and how much gold and all the rest of it and blah, blah, blah. I couldn't imagine what that sort of thing would be like with a, a player base of, of 500 plus. That would be mm-hmm. bonkers. Uh, and I know over here that the lar- larger labs frequently don't really know how much is in the economy it happens to be what people happen to wield when they turn up in terms of money or or resource items yeah or would you when they turn up at a game yeah and it's very fizz rapid very active yeah it's all it's all reacting off 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 visual yeah off cards fundamentally and they don't know yeah they They don't know what's in yeah, I don't know. One major game had somebody handing a large pile of cash recently over here because somebody just found it. <laughs> As you do. Okay. Well, that's the other thing about having it in the app is you can't wash your index cards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can make money laundering day hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, millions and millions of gold pieces have been lost to the to, to down and tied. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, from that from, that, from the, that point of view, though, does that now mean that if if I'm running a game live, does that now mean that I can have somebody in a control room somewhere monitoring things like what's being what's going on real time? It could be. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, one of the technical limitations on uh, LARPs as they currently stand, yeah. uh, using mobile technology, is battery life, and mm, yeah. one of the things and connectivity. Yeah. yeah. So do you really want someone running around with their $700 iPhone or Google Pixel in a field somewhere? Hmm. That seems like no. a recipe for disaster. The 30 or $40 tablet, maybe, but because yeah. it's a tablet, you don't have always on internet. Yeah. True. And you might not have Wi-Fi or connectivity at the site, except for very limitedly. Yeah. So we made a decision very early on that the, app syncs when it is available and you tell yeah. it to yeah so you don't have a complete live image but you do have an image between games because people have a uh they do have a incentive to sync with the game because mm, yeah. that means they have access to 
their advancement points, their ex- experience points, yeah. and all the things from the event. Once they check back in, and that at that point it syncs all like the item descriptions and the action descriptions. Yeah. Another thing from a balance perspective is that if a certain action is just producing a little too much of something, yeah. I can just go in and and knock it down. One of the big yeah. things we constantly look to is actually the online MMO uh, Eve Online. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Which, Eve is very persistent. Very persistent and mm. very economy driven. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I think there was a bachelor's degree just to play it. Don't you? I think they have several PhDs in mm. economics, which are running uh, running everything. And there's yeah, actually yeah. a fantastic book. If anyone is interested, it is a book by Vili Ledin Verta, which and uh, Edward Castronova, called "Virtual Economies: Design and Analysis." Mm-hmm. And it is a its analysis specifically of MMOs. Um, where they got a hold of a lot of data, like hard data mm-hmm. from EVE Online and World of Warcraft yeah. to describe, to take real world economic ideas yeah. and show how they apply seamlessly to to games, online games in particular. Mm-hmm. But yeah. any LARP of any considerable size will have the exact same effects. Yeah, yeah, and he goes out and he's, he gives all these great real world, world examples of it doesn't matter whether you have a currency or not. Yeah, one will develop, and yeah, if you right, have a yeah. worthless currency, another currency will develop. Yeah, true. such as gold pieces in a lot of games. Yeah, have a collapsed value because they're so freely available and handed out. Yeah. They're effectively worthless. You know, they're mm. they're like Confederate dollars. They're not worth a damn thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. So. Yeah. Yeah, I do like that, that thing. If you now, okay, so it's not real time. I completely understand why. It, 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 at the moment, there are technological limitations there. But I think you're right to take those into consideration. But the economy part is really interesting because it, it does stop the the way prices wave or, or, or a, valuable, a valuable thing suddenly becomes invaluable, especially yeah. like gold pieces, the coins themselves. Right. Yeah, yeah. I like that. It's supposed to be the effect of certain things and makes people realize that you, you actually need to know how these things work. Yeah. And it really doesn't matter how much you can jole or write into the setting that something is worth something. The the yeah. market of the game is going to react eventually to it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Matthew, um, I was wondering if you could repeat, because uh, Mark now from uh, Twitch chat, could you name the book again, please, that you just said? Virtual Economies, Design and Analysis by... Edward Castronova, and I apologize for the, pr- the pronunciation of this <laughs> name. Yeah, Vili Leiden Verta. Vili, okay. no problem. What um, that sounds finished to me. Yeah. What what we'll do as well, um, you know, uh, Mark. Now, if uh, if we get the actual title of the book and perhaps an an Amazon link or something like that, we'll, yeah. we'll put it up. In the I show will notes. give you one right now in the chat. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That'd be even better if you could give the thing. I was yeah. looking. It is somewhere on my bookshelves. But yeah, there I you go. I have a heavily annotated copy of it. <laughs> um, what we also do is get this link over in the show notes for anybody yeah. who wants to. Of it as well. So if, yeah, come if you can put that in the chat, I'll make sure that goes into tonight's, into tonight's show notes. Yeah, don't forget that is uh, Amazon.com. So of course, if you are in the in the UK, go to Amazon.co.uk and search for the book. Uh, It'll save you <laughs> on shipping. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> or Amazon. Yeah. Wherever you where you are in the world. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah. The uh, the thing there. Okay, right. So so taking yeah. all that now into consideration. Right. How difficult do you think it, it is now to get, well, to get technology, to get technology into LARP, right? Let's say you're not that technologically minded. You're not perhaps a maker or something like that. How do you sort of start introducing this sort of stuff in? Um, I actually recently wrote an article for the New Orleans, uh, New England Interactive Literature Association mm-hmm. Uh, journal game wrap specifically uh, for that. It's called Harnessing the Glowing Rectangle. Yeah, And there's various levels that you can get into when it comes to incorporating technology. There, Obviously, it has a lot to do with your setting. Yeah. Fantasy games have the hardest. Modern or science fiction or cyberpunk tends to have it eat more easily mm-hmm. uh, yeah. because it's less game-breaking. 
uh, you can start out with just using it as a simple prop or as a facade. One mm -hmm. of the there are plenty. One of the ones I've seen used lots of places is that you can go on most app stores and find like gag tricorder apps. Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. And those are it's amazing how much those actually make a difference in a scene. But those yeah. are those are visual props. Yeah. There's also uh, hacker typer, which is a, a great little tool. If someone's seen that, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah and yeah. there's actually if if you have anyone who knows Linux. There's a fantastic script called Hollywood, yeah, which does nothing but produce a whole bunch of like technical mumbo jumbo garbage oh, on the screen. Oh, oh, trust me. Every time that my wife works in and I and I pretend that I'm working that that web page is there ready to rock. And <laughs> <laughs> but definitely look up the something lesser known as the Unix script Hollywood. It is it is brilliant. Yeah. It just spits out like kernel code on all these different screens. Yeah. And that's that's a really simple way of incorporating technology where you make it as part of the yeah. the setting, but it has no real technical effect. And then you can go into kind of a smoke and mirror sort source of effects where you either have something which is actually human operated on the back end, yeah. like communication systems which are actually like manually controlled. One of the more interesting things I encountered fairly early on when I was LARPing was a IRC chat room, going for the deep cuts back here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was reskinned to look like a computer command line in a science fiction X-Files mm -hmm. Call Cthulhu uh, live action game. Yeah. And the output from the computer was actually someone in another room typing yeah it sounds so silly but it's actually a really great effect where you don't have any narration but you're in this dark room with this computer screen and you're and you're typing in commands and and talking yeah. to this horrible uh -huh. ai that it turns out to be a biotechnical abomination created by the mygo by the end of it like you do yeah well that, you know, that sounds like a lot of fun actually i, I hate it when that happens yeah. um you know, I was the, I was I was watching an interview actually with the with, with the guys that do Mr. Robot, and you know the all all of the code pretty much on there is is a hundred percent accurate um, for what for what they do, and it's it's interesting to see the way they make it look like the actors are actually typing it, and a lot of the time it's a movie that's playing or an animation. Uh, that's playing and they're, and they're just basically, you know, well, acting, I suppose. <laughs> Working with security professionals and people of that nature, all of us really love Mr. Robot because we're like, yeah. oh, he's she, he's actually finding a unsecured port and <laughs> he, yeah. he's doing an insertion attack and yeah. you're looking at it and we're, we, yeah. we pay attention to that stuff. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's almost as bad as soldiers criticizing uh, gunplay <laughs> yeah. movie. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're like, oh, look, uh, an interface with 48-point font. Those exist. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite TV tropes is called audience-friendly interface. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, you, you're, but I mean, I, I suppose, I suppose you really love then uh, Independence Day with the virus that gets uploaded by a Mac, and of course has a nice big, <laughs> you know, skull and right, right, yeah. and it can interface yeah. with a completely alien computer for <laughs> amazing, drivers. amazing, yes. <laughs> a, a, a skull and crossbone for funsies. Yeah, Ex exactly. <laughs> you know, because hey, let's be honest, no. that man's a legend. He can, he, he yeah. can, he can code, man. Well, he can code. <laughs> right, and and he could design a, a virus. I mean, apparently the alien race doesn't have Nortons. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> we have conquered the universe. What's that virus? Uh, yeah, yeah. They had an they're upload not. virus button. We had no chance. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, and I love that as well. Upload virus button. I mean, There's a great on. word actually that I learned for uh, uh, the kind of tension created by technology, like doing this thing, yeah. is a technical melodrama. Yeah, yeah, really great one. Uh, yeah, great <laughs> and you can you can create that in LARPs with these kind of tools. Once you get into more complicated stuff, you start getting into technical issues and technical debt. Yeah, where one of the things I say is, "Tell me how long you think it's going to take." Be more pessimistic. Yeah. <laughs> now double that. <laughs> now double yeah. that easily. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I often have that conversation. You didn't do that. You didn't do that in. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, it takes, takes always takes longer when you think. <laughs> and double it again if the person you have doing it is a volunteer and is not a co-founder. <laughs> yeah. In fact, don't count on existing at all. Yeah. And uh, I'm of the the opinion that if you do not have a if you have a technology based game, you do not have a technical uh, a, a technical co founder, you of talent, yeah, you're you're going to be in trouble. You are very early yeah, okay. on. Yes, and I'm not saying it's impossible, but my your success rate is going to go down considerably. Mm -hmm. And I think that we've all encountered a lot of LARP like websites and technology, which somebody who knew somebody did and either did it for very free or for some sort of points. Yeah. And was not like very, very tied to the game. And we, we've all encountered that they're just seeing something seems unpolished. Something yeah. seems to un, uh, not work. Right. Yeah. And the most yeah. important thing about incorporating technology into your game is it cannot seem like an additional burden. Yeah. You'll meet resistance. You'll meet, yeah. you know, it will be, it will be grudged. It, it, it doesn't work. If, unless you are saving everybody involved time, yeah. you're, gonna, you're going to be, you're going to be in trouble. I agree. So it's got to feel part of the game. It's got to be, there's got to be no resistance to usage. Yeah. It's got to be streamlined and seamless. Yeah. Right. And yeah. if you don't do it right, you know, one of the things that we refer to Planetfall being, as we call it, our Gertie the Dinosaur moment, mm -hmm. where uh, Gertie the Dinosaur is the first ever animated film of any particular note. And that's kind of where we think we are. We're not Steamboat Willie. We're not yeah. Snow White. We're Gertie the Dinosaur. We have proven it can be done. Yeah. We have proven it can be done well. And we're ready to, you know, move and make it into, you know, Steamboat Willie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or, or an anime, whatever, maybe not Snow White, maybe not yet. Yeah. yeah. Definitely not Toy Story. So, <laughs> so if, if, if I'm organizing a game then, right, how, how can I sort of um, use this technology then to, to my advantage? The first step is to create the, the easiest thing and the most common thing currently is online character generation and storage. Mm. Okay. And, you should start there. That way you yeah. don't have any issues with background. You, you don't have any issues with actually trying to incorporate mechanics. Okay. You go in and you say, I want to make this and I want to have things accessible. I want to do check-ins via it. Get rid of as much logistical overhead as you can with computers. Okay. That is the easiest step to take. Yeah. And those use mm -hmm. very, very stable, very, very set technologies yeah. right. in order to do that. Okay. And as far as the mobile aspect, though, you're yeah. going to have to have somebody who is familiar with the technology mm -hmm. to get the get the Planetfall app to the point that it currently is has taken. I mean, obviously, it's part time development. We all have day yeah. jobs, but it still has taken two years of development to get to the level it is. Yeah. And to recreate all that, there are not very many open source options. And even if there were, they would require enough modification that it might as well be a new project. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So the mobile app is a, it's a challenge. And there are larger LARP organizations which are looking at ARG and, yeah. and looking at alternate reality games, yeah. which have nonetheless opted to have a online, like web only component mm, because yeah. it is much harder to, to incorporate. And I'm I'm looking forward to seeing those possibilities and seeing where they they go, yeah, but yeah. Yeah. you're going to have to have someone who can do something dedicated. The other big thing is that let's say that I'm just to grab a UK LARP out of a hat, Empire. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I have a 10, 15 year old system. I think they have, and it is an old style game with yeah. yeah. What you're going to find is that the mechanics do not lend themselves well to automation because the kind of rules that human beings write for human beings hmm. are actually some of the worst kind of rules to give to computers. Okay. Where yeah. literally you could – something that is very easy to add with a single sentence in a rule book 
requires a completely alternate set of functionality for a computer system. Yeah, for well, instance, yeah, I mean, I mean, statement, the, this skill cannot be bought by orcs. Yeah, yeah. In a rule book, I can say that for one rule, and that is all I never need to do is write that down. Yeah. Hmm. If I want to do that in a computer system, I have to. I've create. I have to genericize everything. I have to say these are how skills work. This is how skill purchasing works. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you now have to have this complete functionality for who is banned or authorized to buy these skills. Yeah. Now, once you do that, you've gone from having a single line or rule book to having a very powerful piece of functionality. True. But, but those kind of rules are the thing that where you need somebody who has experience with programming and uh, algorithmic logic yeah. to go in and say, listen, uh, I know what you're getting at. However, <laughs> I'm Um <laughs> The that becomes an that becomes an issue. Mm-hmm. So if you're starting from scratch, it's a lot easier to create a computer friendly system. Yeah, and okay. you know, having knowing what you're doing as far as how much you have signed the programming aspect up for. Yeah, yeah, M- yeah. Much easier to build from the ground up. Um, integrated at that point and it'd be a bought on as much at a much later date right and it goes yeah. into like even character creation systems they they yeah. look different yeah they with interdependence and the way points are spent and you you can you can create a system on paper which is far more complicated to implement on a computer and yeah. vice versa i mean the easiest thing from a computer standpoint is i could create uh to compare D and D and GURPS, for instance, yeah. right? Yeah, that's GURPS is a notoriously hard system to create characters in. Yeah, um, hero, hero, those sorts of systems. Yeah, D and D by comparison is a very easy system to create uh, characters in. Yeah, but if you use a computer yeah. program such as GURPS character system, it actually becomes very, very quick to create GURPS characters because it's just like, oh, 100 points, and you subtract, and you base it on these tables. Okay, yeah. now I just have to show people how much it costs and yes. subtract. And those systems become very, very easy to implement, and you can create systems where you're dealing in thousands of points, yeah. or you can do weird sorts of conversions between things yeah. uh, very easily and in a way where you don't it, – it's very accessible to casual users yeah because the computer can say oh by the way you can do this all the options can be just laid out right ahead of time it's much yeah. better okay yeah i think with that that makes sense hmm. that makes right, a lot yeah. of sense actually all right fair enough then um so uh, I, I hear as well that you you're, you're you're trying to utilize live streaming at games then to 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 basically promote those games is that right now how's that going for you because i know we love live streaming here <laughs> nothing ever goes wrong and it's always right. fine this is more of an experiment <laughs> we've started mm-hmm. and uh our LARP park here in austin is managed by a local daga here uh chapter which is a yeah. battle game uh they are not a traditional larp some people call them a larp some people yeah. in it call them larp but it is much more of a foam buffer combat sport game. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And we started experimenting. They're good friends of mine. They're great guys. Uh, the mm-hmm. large park is called Cauldron's Keep. Yeah. And they have uh, about 10 acres of land, and it's really beautiful. And it's, it's got old oil pumps on it, so uh, oh. they want to run a Mad Max game anytime now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, old, yeah. Rusted, uh, old rusted holding tanks with catwalks. Yeah. And, but they use most of their field space for doing these battle games, and they have two 300-person events there. Great. But it's one of those games where you just line up and you fight. And yeah. as part of our promotional work, just to, to support them, and you know they've been ridiculously supportive of us, we started live streaming their combat events and experimenting with it through Facebook Live. All right, it cool. has its difficulties. Yeah, um, really, I hadn't noticed. No. Jeff <laughs> <laughs> Edward, you're live streaming in two weeks. <laughs> 
No, I, 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 I'll explain our statement in a moment, Matthew. Yeah, but, um, okay. Okay. I'm beginning. I'm beginning to think uh, yeah. that we probably won't be live streaming in two weeks, Rob. To be honest with you, <laughs> <laughs> we're done. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> the the big thing is is that it often is very hard to get good shots of LARP. And oh, uh, yeah. if you're doing a battle game, it is a lot easier. And we've actually had some really great success. It's been really good for promotional work. We've gotten a lot more post-game shares than live viewers. We mm, usually have yeah. about 10 to 15 live viewers yeah. uh, on a Saturday afternoon. and But it gets shared dozens and dozens and dozens of times by participants. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And we've had some fantastic uh, reactions and people love seeing themselves in action. Mm. And it's almost, it, it works for DAG. The reason it works for DAG is that it sets itself as these coherent, short encounters where it's like capture the flag. Yeah. yeah. And you can keep an eye on things. You can offer live commentary. And so far, we've just been doing it with a phone with a stabilizer rig yeah. and an external microphone. Yeah. And an external power source because God does that chew through uh, better. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> And it's been very successful. It's been a great advertisement for this uh, event. There's a there's an event he runs every year called Forging Pangea, which is a really big event. It has really strict costuming standards, so it looks really good. And they have just really good high competition games with a lot of really good fighters from around the Texas area. And we've done live streaming of it, and it's been immens immensely successful as a promotional thing. I encourage people to start looking at it. Yeah. We are looking at actually setting up uh, advancing to the point where we're going to get a laptop that takes in multiple types of feeds yeah. and maybe getting uh, a phantom camera drone or renting one mm -hmm. and seeing if we can do more of a, it, it's fun for me because basically I get to play sports reporter. Well, yeah, and, my toys and I'm not, I'm not and in the, you know, the same risk of being on the sidelines at a, a sporting event. Yeah, yeah. Play, it really is. Play with I a mean, people drill, barrel into yeah. you. <laughs> 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 um, people love to ham it up for the camera, though. And we've actually done things like uh, they have about 30, 45 minute games and plus the rest period. And we you know people get to, we do like in between game interviews. We ask people what happened and everyone <laughs> turns into a sports star and starts talking about, you know, <laughs> our team did this, our team did that. Yeah. And it's a very positive thing. It, it gives a lot of energy up. It makes people really feel part of it. Yeah. And I really think it's going to be a thing in the future for certain types of games. Yeah. I don't know if it's really going to be a thing for immersive uh, gaming. We have done kind of behind the scene live streams before and during events. Yeah. For Planetfall. And our main thing is we mainly get viewers of players who could not be there that day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it increases community engagement that way. That's, yes. Yeah, yeah. And we've, we've learned a lot. But I think there is a future in it. I don't know if it's going to become something like Twitch. Maybe it will. Mm. Yeah. No, for I, a very yeah. specific type of game. Yeah, it's no. Possibly I, it could become a category in Twitch. You never yeah, know. yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. I think it's. I think one of the things is people like to see things happening. So a combat game, I can really see that. That's just pure, pure mm. viewability. But something a bit longer, slower, more immersive. There's gonna be long periods where there's actually not a lot happening. Well, no, yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. LARP has love to go. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. But all the same, I, see, I think you're right, my friend. I, I, I'm a big believer that I think in the future uh, long term that we're going to see a lot more of this kind of stuff yeah and and Br British LARPers particularly I don't know what it's like in America but you know the amount of times it's like do you know what let's get a beer let's get a cup of tea <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's just I sit mean, around an and issue. talk even in, about even in games that, that really really kind of mm. um, I'm going to share a link to uh, our most recent uh, one of our most recent live casts from the Pandy yep. event was actually last weekend. Uh, and, yep. and we, uh, it, there is a lot of that. I think with the Facebook live thing, we've learned that what you do is you film the action, you keep it on point. Yeah. You may, it's, it's like filming a sporting event. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. Except for the commercial breaks are a lot longer and you're there. <laughs> you film encounters, you film NPCs going out. 
you film big fights. Yeah. You don't, or you film, you can film things like big public events. Like people like watching the streams of like town meetings, but those are mainly people that are already involved in the game. Yeah. yeah. That's a different audience. Yeah, oh, yeah. But it increases the idea of an inclusion. It increases inclusion. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Completely agree with that. That's great. Mm. Okay. Well, yeah. you know, you'll have to get, uh, definitely keep us posted with um, all the things that you'll be doing there, you know, and we will get some of these links and what have you obviously in, in the show notes for today, but we'll get them up on the website as well. Um, to yeah. sort of promote that and, and get a bit more awareness as well. Um, and of mm -hmm. course, you know, if nothing else, to see how well you do as a sports commentator. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I am a talented, loudmouth amateur. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you sympathize. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing, and I can waffle for for, for Britain. So there we go. That's uh, that's pretty much yeah. <laughs> what we're going to do there. Um, uh, is there are, are there any other questions from from you guys? Just out of curiosity. Um, for I, I don't think so. I think it has huge potential. Mm. I honestly do think it has huge mm. potential for loads of uh, the futuristic games and post-apocalyptic and stuff like that, which are getting more and more popular in yeah. LARPing communities. I think if you can get an app and obviously distribute it and how to do that, I think most of them would pick it up. It would be a godsend for mm. people running the game, an absolute godsend and for people who are actually playing the game as well because how awesome would it be just to have your little things you know and track everything it's amazing yeah. it's it's really cool mm. you know yeah. and what's even more important better is you can do it with a mobile phone and everyone has a mobile phone nowadays or so you know, extra even, cost to your life kit. Or you, or you can get a very cheap thing, just, just as Matthew yeah. said, carry your very expensive daily driver out, yeah. but your yeah, you know, cheap just, tablet or cheap your phone will do just, just as well. Yeah, even Look, the tablet. How, much, tablet how much time How much time have you spent character generating, right? You know, on, on anything that, that you do, LARP-wise, D&D, whatever it is, right? Bloody playing World of Warcraft. I spent ages when I, <laughs> I first picked up my first character, you know, ooh, what do I play? What do I play? Type Something of, we didn't a touch on, actually, is yep. character creation can be way more organic. In, mm, uh, right. Who? Uh, anyone here played Traveler? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. Robert. Remember yes. the life path system? <laughs> oh, I, I have to think of it because it's been quite a while, but yes. Is that it's, something uh, like the more you do something, the better it improves? Actually, we have experimented with that in LARP, and I will I will get to that in a okay. second because that okay. is an object lesson in experimentation. <laughs> okay. uh, the entire the life path system in Traveler was you start out choose where you came from. All mm -hmm. right, because of where you came, where you were born, or where you came from, you have these choices. Yeah. What do you do next? And then what do you do next? And then what do you yeah, do yeah. next? So and we incorporated, process. yeah, and and it gives you different skill choices. Yeah. Based on that, we incorporated that into Planetfall, where you create a character. And the first step of create a character is where on Earth did you come from or did you come from the Mars colony or did you do this or did you do that? And based on those choices, you get unique character creation steps mm -hmm. and then you get skills and you buy skills for each period of your life. And this has really two really good effects. It's frustrating for people who are looking for a very specific set of skills, but what it does is it makes it so that it's harder to create completely nonsensical sets of skills. Once you like committed to being a soldier, it's very hard to then become a diplomat mechanic. Yeah, yeah. So it makes it so there's interdependence and breadth of skills. Yeah. Mm. The other thing it does is that it makes it so that you get an organic character growth that educates you about the world. One of the things, and I know there's many games where this is not true, but in fantasy games, you can pretty much fake it. Uh, most human fighters can just like act like a human fighter from 10th century, and you'll at least be able to muddy through it mm -hmm. and learn more about the lore. In science fiction, if you play an Imperial officer and a Starfleet officer and you put them next to each other together, their sheets might be similar, but the, the world demands that they act very differently. Yeah. And if one acted like the other, there would be a problem. Yeah. Um, 
because of that world education, lore education is more uh, important for starting characters. So what that system does, much like the traveler system did, mm-hmm. is it teaches you, it says, you went and did this and did this and did that. And you start getting a story for your character that is fitting for the game world. Yeah. You don't, you're not able to just make it up yourself. You yeah. have a, you have a background, creating your background and creating the, the character sheet are completely joined together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, nobody's independent of the, the things you have. They're not created independently of your life. They're part of it. And if you look at that system, we have like a hundred different life choices, Mm. but you only see like four at a time Yeah, because the system goes, oh, you pick this. These are your next choices. Yeah. Yeah, These are your skill lists. Sorry, Matthew, go on. Well, I mean, if I had to write that down, I mean, especially if I had to like check to see whether the character sheet was good or not, Mm -hmm. that would be a nightmare. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But computers follow yeah. rules really easily, and you can't cheat with them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, that's what they're good at. And I hear that. So it's that unveiling of the it's that unveiling of options to stop them becoming too much to handle as well. Yeah. If you, unveiling options is something that yeah. character creation is, uh, computers yeah. are very, very good at. Yeah. Yeah. And, and explaining you what the consequences are quickly. Hmm. Which is great because sometimes you go to a complicated character creation system on paper that can really put you off getting too involved in it, or worst, or conversely, some people get over involved in it and really try and tweak it. But at this, this for computers is going to be a lot fairer and easier. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, computers it, it, are it, fair. It, that's the other thing. They're cruel yeah. but fair. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they, they are. They, they are cruel. They're they cold. <laughs> well, I mean, we actually have like a death draw on our uh, on our app, hmm. where you start your your. Uh, let me see here. You actually have a medical emergency button. Yeah, oh, nice. Um, and when you start your emergency. Oh, you've got to, you're timed. <laughs> and you can, yeah. as someone can give you first aid. Yeah. 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 And then when you treat it, it tells you the, the character and you can see actually my health went down because I did uh, that. Oh yes. Yeah. Um, so that has a chance of death and has a chance of death based on the armor you're wearing and your yeah. stats. Yeah. Mm. And because I can make this like 1% chance of dying, I don't need to have multiple reses. Yeah. It's not like everyone is just going to die the first game, but every single time you go down, there's this like low level of risk that makes people slightly less able to do damage. And that gets into my ability to fiddle with very small numbers. Yeah. And, but also because the medical emergency thing is something that's handled by the app, you can't get away from it. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, the Joker line, you know, the thing about chaos, it's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter whether you're friends with the GM or not. <laughs> the, yeah. the, app, the yeah. app showed the skulls and yeah. told the story <laughs> that you're dead. Yeah. Roll up another one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that is fair. Well, well, Matthew, thank yeah. you very much. It's, it's been a very, yeah. very enlightening really talk. Happy. And um, I need that app. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep you informed as to yeah. our upcoming projects. Please yeah. do, Matthew. We'd, we'd love to hear more from you in the future and, yeah. uh, and see what develops. Yeah, and I hope some of European uh, your European listeners will consider going to World of Darkness Berlin and getting involved in Enlightenment of Blood. It is May, early May. Anyway, uh, so let's hope yeah. some can go then. Um, uh, talk to us about it. That means that would be fantastic. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, if any, if, if if anybody uh, that is listening to this and is going, you know, let us know what the experience was, because uh, yeah. we would be very interested in actually uh, hearing about that. Um, yeah. And of course, you can email that, that across to lotbookshow at gmail dot com. Uh, right mm-hmm. now, um, just to sort of uh, uh, come on a little bit there, Rob. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to an event, aren't we? Yeah, actually, why I mentioned live streaming. Coming mm. up in about two weeks now, we have the Watch Your Game Kit Festival, which is coming up in Gloucester. So, for our point of view, Matthew, it's about an hour or so drive away. Yeah. Um, 
if I mentioned live streaming, because as as an event, yes, it's a big shopping event. It's a kit fair. It's some beautiful, old, very old buildings, and you can buy almost anything you want, lab related there. Yeah, there will be a lot of traders there, and there's going to be things like lab combat competitions, lapers and cosplayers. I'm not quite sure what they're doing. We're doing something with lapers and cosplayers. Um, there'll be a, and then also there can be a lot of events representing themselves there and talking about what they have coming up, and yeah. a lot of venues talking about what they have coming up. So yes, yes, we'll be then hopefully streaming some of it live and recording off a later date. Yeah, you absolutely. Europeans and your century-old buildings and your castles, <laughs> <laughs> cheaters, cheaters, cheaters all over you. And it's like <laughs> Eastern <laughs> Europeans running post-apocalyptic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, you got oppressed by the Soviets for fifty years. Now you have all these cool empty army things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how dare you have those? How dare they? You know, how dare it's... I be in a country that's young and relatively prosperous. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 I know. I know when, what do you, what do you fe- your fellow countrymen sit together? Martin Vano <laughs> in the Czech Republic got to run a, a dystopian sci fi game in an old Soviet bunker. Cool. <laughs> I, I, I'm a friends with him, but god damn him. Yeah. <laughs> Hateful. I know. I, I have a sneaky feeling that the house that I live in is older than your country, but I'm just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You know. It's it's funny. Uh, it's funny my, when my British friends come over showing off in Texas. We have uh, yeah. my the oldest town I've ever been in was founded in 1854. Wow. Um, <laughs> I got socks uh, that are older. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you have furniture that is older than some of the towns in Texas. <laughs> yes. But hey, look, you know, think of it this way. You've you've been able to model what you wanted, you know, for your town to look mm-hmm. like. We've had to make mm-hmm. do with what everybody else had before. But think of it Pretty like much. that. The problem is we just make it look like your places. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're so self-conscious about how young and, and like historyless yeah. we are. We're just like, we're going to build everything to look like Romans. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Pretty they'll be much. fooled. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty, pretty they much. They have to be older than us. They look like Romans. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Exactly. Right then. So uh, that's um, bop, 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 bop. So, so a quick look thing, a quick scan down the thing. Um, right. So this is, this is a shout out to anybody. If you've got an event coming up in 2017, then why not let us know by dropping us a line at show at gmail.com. Uh, we can promote it on the website, promote it on the, one, on the pod, podcast, get it out into Facebook, etc. Let everybody know, right? That, that'll, that helps you out. That helps us out with content. Because as I said before, you try to search yeah. for like LARP news or what have you on the Tinter web. Guess which bloody website comes up? Ours. Um, <laughs> it's difficult to find news when you're the news uh, in, in that respect. Uh, so if you want to come and see us as well, uh, as Rob said, we will be at that event. What's your game kit fair? That's uh, February 4th and 5th. I think we're there, just there for the 4th, Rob, if I remember really. Yeah, we, we, we haven't been there for the 4th, so please feel free. We, we'll, we'll be fairly easy to spot. We'll be the only ones wearing lap book T-shirts. Yeah. Um, come on, have a chat. Yeah. We'd, we'd, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, and that's in Blackfriars Lane in Gloucester. Uh, yeah. So, you know, pop along and come see us, you know. And maybe maybe even the buzz will be, will be there as well. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? With that fantastic beard, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's that sort of thing. Uh, is there anything else, Rob? Uh, I think that's all for tonight. We were focusing very much on, on Matthew, yes. and uh, yes. I think we've got everyone to the care of there. That's brilliant. Thank you. You know, mm-hmm. which, is, which is as it is. So, um, I, again, um, thank you. Thank you, Matthew. It was a very interesting chat for yeah. us. Um, my, my, it's my, a pleasure to talk about my passions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my... My geek, my geek quota and uh, what have you has been filled for the evening yeah. uh, in that in that respect. Um, so thank you very much for that, and I, I can't wait to see what you will do next uh, within this space, as it were. Yep. 
Um, so I think that's kind of it. I would like to say a big thank you uh, to all of our lovely patrons who just make it a little bit easier to keep this show going. I've been able to buy some new kits um, over the Christmas period. Uh, and by you helping us fund this show has allowed me to spend my money on buying some new kits to uh, hopefully make this whole production a little bit smoother um, and a little bit better. You know, lapel yeah. mics. I, I bought a... Um, a uh, DJI um, uh, steady cam thing, uh, the Osmo Mobile, yeah, that sort of thing, mm-hmm. yeah, and that'll just kind of just it all helps us to you know to make it look a little bit smoother and a little yeah. bit more professional, even though we're not at all, yeah. Um, <laughs> so thank you very much to all of our lovely patrons with that. Uh, so again, if you'd like to get in contact with the show, just email. Show at gmail.com is there a topic yep. you would like us to discuss or something cool you saw or just fancy writing an article for the website then email the show that's show at gmail.com right then so music was provided by Ben Sound at bensound.com he has some fantastic music over there uh, for just about every situation uh, if you want to help us out go across to Patreon at patreon.com forward slash la book you know just that dollar a month just helps us out just that little bit more uh we have got a shop up on red bubble and hopefully we'll be making that a little bit easier to get to and navigate soon uh you can listen to the podcast on itunes stitcher it's up on youtube we're getting up on twitch again now and of course podbean just search for larp right you'll, you'll find it uh, or even now pretty much a search for larp because i've managed to tweak a few settings um, if you want to go across the website, it is at www.lapbook.com. Uh, news, reviews, etc. We are, of course, on just about every single social media platform going. So you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus. Just search for LARPbook. You will find us. And don't forget, whatever you use to actually catch this podcast, if there's a way of giving us a review and possibly some five stars or what have you, then we'd be grateful if you could do that as well, because that really helps us out and gain popularity. So this is uh, basically the end of the show for us, uh, for the first one back in 2017. I'm Stuart Edwards, that's Robert Davis. We got Thomas Hello. the Buzz down by there. And again, a massive, massive thank you to Matthew Webb from Incognita Limited. Thank you very much, Matthew. Excellent. Thank you. Right. So, no worries. We will see you all again. Have fun, everybody. Take care. Now, best.